What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today I'm pretty fired up for this video because Acer Store was nice enough to send me over a NAS and we're gonna do a quick overview about it right now. So just quickly the overview. So today we're gonna be working with this NAS. This is the Acer Store AS5402T. It's a nice two bay NAS. It has four M.2 spots that it supports and it also has a dual two and a half gig NIC on it got two usbs but we'll go more detail into this but this is the nas it's a nice small nas you can see it really isn't that big i know it's a two bay so it's not going to take up a lot of room but this thing is really nice for the size and uh we're gonna get more into it though but i'm gonna put that down so yeah so they sent me over this nas and i was able to you know see what the deal is and try to get a feel for it and say i'm just gonna do an overview but we are gonna work on this more in the future on some other projects this nas is capable of running plex off of it as well as a ton of other stuff but right now we're going to do an overview and show you from there. So to start, we're going to come over to Acer Store's site for this. And you can see over here that here I am with the AS5402T. This is the NAS that I was just showing you guys. So it does have a Intel chip in it. It is x86. It does have the N5105 CPU in it. So it's very common in NAS boards and boards that are used in the NAS devices. It's a quad core, which is, is nice to have all the extra power. Like I said, it supports four M.2 NVMe SSDs. By default, it comes with four gigs of DDR4 RAM. Pretty sure it's expandable, we'll double check. It has two, two and a half gig NICs, like I was saying. It's really nice having redundant NICs. It's got three USB 3.2 at 10 gigs. So, I mean, the speeds are lightning fast and it's great. To have, especially in NAS, you can transfer data super quickly. It's got HDMI in case you are gonna run a display off of it. And it also has some other stuff, but let's go more into detail. It has some other stuff, but let's go a little more into this NAS. So I like to get more into the hardware specs of this NAS. And over here, we can see again, it has the Intel N5105. It's X64 or 86, however you like to say it. It's a quad core 2.0 gigahertz that goes up to 2.9, which is great. I mean, that's a lot of power for a little NAS. It has four gigs of RAM, and I'm pretty sure it's expandable here you go. And it's expandable up to 16 gigs. So you can throw two 8 gig sticks in there and you can really make the ultimate Plex server or a file server, whatever you might need. Having 16 gigs of RAM in that NAS would be amazing. It's going to give you a lot of extra power. It only has two slots though, so you can only get two 8 gig sticks. Wow. So by default, it comes with four gigs of DDR4 memory. It is expandable to 16 gigs, so you can throw two more 8 gig sticks in there. And give that NAS more memory to for your Plex server or whatever else you might be using it for. It is only two slots. You can only get two 8 gig sticks to get up to 16. So just keep that in mind. It's got onboard 8 gigs of EMMC. So that's pretty common. That's how it's going to be storing the data for the actual NAS to run. And then other than that, we have our drive. So we have four M.2 slots that we could use for cache drives or anything else we might need. And then it's only two bays because it's a two bay NAS. You can either use two three and a half inch HDDs, two two and a half HDDs, or you can use two two and a half SSDs, or you could use the NVMEs as it says. But that's probably for the four gig, the four slots of M.2. That's not going to go into your actual drive base. Going through some more of the specs, it does have some external ports on it. Like I was saying, it has the three USBs, two and two and a half gig NICs, and the HDMI. And other than that, there's really nothing too important to know. If you're interested, it's 1.7 kilograms or 3.77 pounds. That's without discs, so just keep that in mind. But other than that, that's really all the important stuff of this NAS. I mean, it's a very nice looking NAS. I'm going to pick it up again just so we can take a look at it. So I just want to take another quick look at the NAS now that we went through all the details. So let's just look at it a little bit more. So here is the NAS again. I know it's really shiny, so you see me again. But this front plate is plastic. Uh, the actual whole shell is plastic, but the front plate is magnetic, so it pops right off. So you have toolless access to pull out the drive bays and you could put your new drives in. And then it just kind of clicks right back on. And it's magnetic, so it made that a lot easier for me. But spinning around, like I said, it's nice and sleek. It has everything right there you need, and it has the two NICs for the 2.5 gig internet. So that's a really nice touch to have. So you have redundant links, or if you need to split it out to different areas, really nice to have. Um, but yeah, that's the NAS. I'm going to open it up the front again. And I'm going to pull out some of the drive sleds and just show you how that looks. I just let out one of the drives. Uh, these are just Seagate drives I picked up off eBay just to throw in here. But here's the sled. It's a plastic sled, which is pretty much how all NASs are now. Um, 
it does have like this square to pull out and then you just kind of pull the tab first time i went to pull a sled out it's it's really it's firm so you really need to give it a good pull to unclick it and slide the tray the sled out so it's going to feel like you're going to break it but you won't you'll be okay on the sides to mount your drives it has these little pull tabs so i'll just take one out really quick so you just kind of pull this tab out and it just lines up and that's how you mount your drive so you would pull both of these out slide your drive in and line it up and then you just kind of push it back on i'm seeing this more commonly on these smaller two or three or even four bay nazis i've seen this on synology qnap and other brands that i've come across they do use these so it's nice toolless you know access to put your drives in the sleds personally i like it a lot better Sitting there with the little M.2 screws trying to slide, no, screw them into the sleds is a pain. You lose the screws, whatever it happens. So I really do like the toolless option, as long as they're like sturdy. These are nice and solid, so I'm not really worried about breaking them. I'm going to slide this back in, and then I think we're going to throw it on the power meter, and we're going to see how much power this uses. So I just plugged it into the power meter. We're going to give that a minute so it can power up and get to an idle speed. And when it loads up, we're going to load into the admin webpage, and then we will... I'll just give you what the power is it's pulling is. Just plugged it into the kilowatt. We're going to give it a minute just so we could power up and get to idle. And then when it's all done, I will give you what it's reading. And then we're going to go into the admin portal and go through the setup. All right, so the NAS is idled out. I got the web portal back up. I actually had to run another Anchor IP scan because I must have plugged it into either the different NIC or my router leased out a new address to it. So I was sitting here trying to get the address, but it changed. If you're interested in the power usage of this NAS, currently we're sitting at 22 watts. Now, let me remind you that this is the base configuration with only 4 gigs of RAM and 2 drives in the NAS bay. So it's only using the 2 drives, and that's it. I don't have any of the M.2 slots, and I only have 4 gigs of RAM. This, this will definitely change if you're going to add 4 drives to the M.2 slots, and if you're also going to be using the second NIC, as well if you're going to be putting more RAM in there. I only have probably one 4 gig stick in there. So if you double up with two 8 gig sticks, it's going to increase the power usage as well as the M.2 slots. But I think it's well worth it for 22 watts. You could run a whole server off of this. You could have your file server as well as your Plex. I'm not sure if it can run a Docker environment, but it, it might be able to. Um, I'm going to have to look more into that. But for under 40 watts to run a whole media server and everything else on it, I mean, it's a really good setup. So let's get into the web portal and then we'll go through the setup and then i think that's a good overview of what this nas can do okay so when you first get into your nas after you power it up this is going to be the setup i'm going to go through the setup with you really quickly so i'm just going to agree to the agreement i've actually already done this before but we're going to do it again i actually wipe my nas out just to show you guys how this works i really like the setup wizard i've only worked with a couple of nas brands but this one so far has been super nice with the options it gives you in the wizard so what i really like is you can do this one click setup or you can do a custom setup where you really can manually configure everything like i said it's a two bay nas so there's really not a lot of raid options or anything else by the stock options you could do unless you really add it on like cash drives and everything else the one click setup is really good in my opinion but if you want to really set stuff differently you can do the custom setup so i just changed the dark mode i'm going to do the one click setup we're going to click next we can name it so i'm going to call it file nas because that's what's going to be used and then we're going to enter some account info so i'm going to do carmine i'm going to give it a password so this would be my password to actually log into the portal it's going to give you a warning saying that all data stored on the hard drives will be erased so it's a fresh install so it's going to wipe the drives to make the array this is common because this is how NAS arrays are made. So then it gives you over here for the option of the RAID level. So we could either do maximum capacity, so I could do a RAID 0 and have just under 4 terabytes. Or I could do balanced and have two just under 2 terabytes, but I have the redundant disk. So I'm going to do RAID 1 because this is going to be a file server. I don't want to lose my info. And you could also set up to support snapshots. So it's really nice that the NASs will actually take snapshots of the data. So in the chance that something does get lost, it could go back to a snapshot and has the data. So I'm also going to enable that. I'm going to start the initialization. Oh, I'm going to actually check off the box first, and then I'm going to start the initialization. I'm going to save the password in uh, Brave, because why not? So right now it's going to make out my RAID array, and this will only take a few minutes because it's only two, two terabyte drives. So since it's only two drives, it's not going to be a super long process. But we're going to let this initialize, and then we'll be right back. After the array is built out until initialized, it's going to ask you to register your NAS. If it's your first time using an Asus Store product, you could click over here and you'll make an account. 
If it's not, you can come over here and make select it and enter your ID. Or you can register later, so you can pick your choice. I'm going to enter my ID really quick, and then I'll show you the next step. Over here, it's going to ask you for your info to register your NAS, so you can just go through and fill it out. And then when it says, where will this NAS be used, it means, like, office, you know, if it's a huge office, a smaller office, or home or Soho. So, if you're just going to use it in your house or your home lab, you'd fill out home or Soho. I'm going to finish this out, and then we'll hit the next step. Now that we're all done, we're going to click start, and our NAS is all set up. Now we'll just let this load and then we'll be brought back into the web page and here we go we're signing in so it's telling you uses you know press your privacy and then we're going to be setting our default ports for access to the web portal so by default the ip is 8000 sorry i didn't say this earlier so it would be your ip colon 8000 to access it or if you want to use https it'd be 8001 i'm going to leave this default just because i'm good with that it doesn't interfere with anything else. It does also say to make sure that you use a strong password. You should change your passwords regularly. You also want to check that you have SSH and SFTP shut off to the NAS unless you really need it, especially publicly. You don't want that open. So we're just going to click OK. They give you a nice quick tour, which I've done before. I'm going to do it again just to show you guys. It's honestly, it's really good. It's probably one of the ones that are actually more useful. So it's going to help you go through and just do the initial setup. I'm only going to have one user, so I'm going to click Note. Over here, it's going to show you File Explorer, so we can open that up and we can see our files. So you could actually upload directly from the NAS webpage, or you could whack whack into it off your computer. Uh, you can share the sharing options. You can set the different directories. So let's make a share folder really quick. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click Create a New Share Folder. I'm going to click Add. We're going to call it Files. And then I'm going to click next. I don't want it invisible and I do want a recycle bin. So I'm going to click next. I want it read and write for all users. I don't want anonymous because I don't want somebody to be able to just um, get into it without credentials. We want to keep it password protected. I don't want to encrypt it because it's not really a big deal. But if you did want to encrypt it or enable worm to protect the uh, write, write protect, you could do that. It's just going to give you an overview to confirm. I'm going to click finish. Now it's been created. Uh, I'm not going to make it, oh, and this one's going to be about accessing from File Explorer, so we're going to do that. So it's really simple. You could actually just come over here and you could either open up Windows Explorer. So I could drag that over here, or you could open up Run. So you just do slash slash. Now you're going to do the slash that's above your enter key. So you can see it's the other ones going the uh, front to back, or I don't know, however to say it. You're going to do your IP. So mine is 141. If yours is something different, you're going to enter it. Then you could just hit enter. And then it's going to ask me for my credentials, so it would be whatever you set for yours. I'm going to click remember. And now you can see over here, I actually have everything that I just set up. And here's that files directory that I just made. So I could actually put a new file in here. I'll call it my file. And we'll minimize this for now, and you'll see this in a second. So we're going to click next. I don't want to access this outside my local network. I want to keep it private, so we're just going to skip that. And then if you want to receive notifications, you can set that up. So whatever how you want to do it. If you do expose it to the internet, or if you're downloading anything on here that might be a little questionable, it does have a defender on here, so it can scan through files and protect it. And then here's just another like um, host-based firewall kind of thing. You could block stuff based off certain IP addresses or unsuccessful logins. But really, other than that, that's it. And you can see we're all done. And now if I come back over to File Explorer, and I go to Files, Here's that file I just made. So it does work, and you know, here's my NAS share. All right, so we're able to get our files from Explore. We also can get them over here, so that's all set up. Other than that, there's a lot of different apps in here that you can go through and take a look. As a troubleshooter, it has like services you could do, access controls so you can make user accounts. There's a ton of different stuff, but I'm not gonna get into all of this. I just wanted to do it as a quick overview. I just wanted to do a quick overview of the NAS. I really don't want to go into all the details yet. Like I said, we're going to work on this some more in the future. So you're going to see this NAS pop up probably a few more times in videos. But right now, I just want to give you a quick overview and how to get it running. So this is the AS5402T. This is the 2-bay NAS. And I want to thank Asus Store again for sending this over. And I'll have all links below where you can access it. They actually have a Amazon site. And I'll have a link below to purchase it if you're interested and some other stuff for them. But you can see it's only $369 on their Amazon. This is for North America. I can't say what it is going to be for other countries. But it's a great little NAS and it's such a great for the price. I mean, $369 for all this that you get. 
I think this is a great option compared to some of the other brands that are out there. But that's enough talking about the NAS. It's time to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I know it's a little bit lengthy and it's just an overview and how to set up the NAS, but you know, it's got to be done. So you're going to see this NAS some more again. I know I keep saying it, but you're going to see it again. There's going to be some more videos and I hope you check them out. I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I'll have links below to all the gear I use in my home lab. I'll also have an invite to my Discord server so you can come in here. We can chat about projects or anything else. You guys can drop a like and if you want to comment below what NAS you have, if you have one that you're using your home lab and what you're using it for. So let's see what everybody else is using their NAS is for. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.